Welcome back. This is module five, and we're going to get a little advanced. We're going to start combining functions and formulas together, and we're going to do three things. First of all, we're going to flesh out the rest of our budget here. We're going to add a column type so we can designate whether the transaction is an expense or an income automatically. And we're going to do that by using the categories we already set up and combining the match function, the if error function, and the if function. So we're going to do several things all at once there to do that automatically. Then we're going to set up some filtering. I'm going to show you how to create and use the filter function, as well as use what's called a slicer. This will enable us in this transaction sheet to filter out transactions based on categories or payment amounts. And then finally, we're going to create a new sheet that has a search bar on it. So we'll be able to type in a search term, and then it'll search through all of our transactions and only return those that match the search term. This is great. And I use this in the real world with my budget, because I've got a whole year's worth of transactions in one sheet. And sometimes I just want to filter things out using that search term. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, I've filled in all the blanks here that we need, just randomized a bunch of categories on the column D, as well as the payment methods on column E. The only thing that I left blank on payment methods uh, is when I've got a paycheck over here, that's just an auto draft and I'm just leaving that blank. So it doesn't really matter. The only thing we're gonna be tracking payment methods for are gonna be for our expenses. Now, let's throw in a column to the left right here. And we're going to say that this is the type. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at the category and we want to determine if it's paycheck, then we want this to be expense. Okay, so we could do a couple different things. Here would be kind of a hard coded, more simple version. We could say if category equals paycheck, then we're going to type in income. And if it doesn't, then we'll type in expense. If we only have one category that's going to be paycheck, then this will be fine. And we can just drag this down. And now anywhere that we've got a paycheck, here's one down here, it's going to successfully say that, that yes, this is income. And right here is another paycheck, income, income, income. Okay, so that's one way to do it. What if we have multiple income accounts, and we do, we've got other income. And so let's just add other income right here. We'll make this like a, I don't know, just give ourselves a bunch of money, right? $4,500. How about that? And we'll change this to other income. Oops, other income. But it still says expense. That's because we hard coded this. Okay, well, the way we can get around this, we got to use some other formulas too. So let me go over here to categories and I'm gonna walk through on this sheet how each of these is gonna work before we combine them together in one fell swoop. So let me show you the match function first. Match is gonna take a search key and let's uh, say it's in this cell right here. In fact, let me just go ahead and say other income. So we've got something listed there and we're gonna say match this in a range and our range is going to be this categories income accounts and it's going to say that it matches it well we also need to specify a search type this if you remember is an optional parameter because it's in these brackets we don't have to have that there in fact let's leave it out and it gives us the answer two okay is that meaningful at all well, not really, not yet. What we want is to make sure that we find an exact match. If the income accounts are not in order, we want to just make sure that it gives us an exact match. By default, it's gonna find the largest value less than or equal to the search key. We don't want that. We only want exact matches to our search key. So zero finds the exact match when a range is unsorted you'll find that there are often these optional parameters in some of our more complicated functions. And for example here, it's not gonna change anything. But let me just show you if we have something else in here like the word pay. That's still matching it. It's not giving us any different answer because it's finding what it refers to as the largest value less than or equal to the search key. So if we throw a zero in here, then boom, did not find value pay in match evaluation because it ain't there, right? 
Okay, but if we write paycheck, then it is there. It's in position one is what the one is indicating. How do we get it so that it doesn't give us this nasty error because we don't want that. So what we can do here is we can copy all that, cut it out of the way, and we can use this is error function. And this says checks whether a value is an error. So if I put this in and I wrap it like that, it says true. So that is an error. Paycheck is not an error. Other income is not an error. Okay, how is this going to be useful for us? Well, if we see how the logic here works, then we can make an if statement regarding this whole logic. So if I cut all of that out and I say, if, if this value is true, so if there's an error, then we're going to return a value. So if there's an error, remember, it's not finding this in an income account. So if that's an error, it's not finding it in income, then it's an expense account, right? And if it does find it, it's an income account. So this is how we can check and return automatically whether it's in an income or an expense account. Okay, let's put this over into our budget. So here, instead of all this junk, we are simply going to match E2, and that's not the correct thing that we're going to match. We're going to match D2 to this category's income accounts using an exact match. And if there's an error, we return expense. If not, we return income. Let's click that. Let's press Control Enter to autofill all the way down. And then let's come over here and check out all of our accounts where we've got income. So here right here is a other income and it's showing income. Here's our paycheck showing income. I think I put like two a month in here. Here's a paycheck right here showing income. And we could just search for all the paychecks so they highlight real easily for us. There's one on 3-1. There's one on 3-15. Let's throw in other income again, or let's just say bonus over here. And we'll do, oh, let's give ourselves, what, $9,800? How about that? And we have to categorize it because this is what it's checking against. And boom, type income. Okay, let's talk about filtering. We can do these filters in a few different ways in Google Sheets. We actually have filters built right here into the table that we built. We can filter by color, by condition, by values. Uh, we're not going to use that built-in menu because what I want to show you are two other things, a filter function over here in a new sheet in just a moment, and then a slicer, which is like a drop-down menu for filters. So first of all, let's use the filter function. I'm going to create a new sheet. I'm going to put on my font that I like. I'm going to turn off the grid lines. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to rename this filter. And then look here, I'm going to move this. You can move your sheets on the bottom over here to the end and then change the color to, I don't know, orange. How about that? Now type in equals filter and we've got the filter function. All it takes is a range and then a condition and optional other conditions. So you can put multiple conditions in here. So we're gonna use a range as our table itself. And you know what we didn't do earlier? We didn't even name this thing. So let's name our table budget by double clicking in the top left where the title is. Come back over here to our filter tab, type it in. And now if we start typing budget, we've got all the categories or all of the columns rather for our table named budget. And we're just gonna select the whole thing as our range. And we want the condition to be, let's type in budget again, and let's filter by category. And we want that category to equal A1 because we're gonna type our term right up here in A1. And let's type in auto and show you that, hey, check that out. It actually filters everything except for the auto transactions out. Now let's make this a little bit more user friendly. We're gonna come up here and we're going to add a row above and we're going to paste in these column headers, make those bold. Let's just move this over here, filter by, and then we've got that selected. Okay, so now anytime I change this, 
it'll give me all the transactions in that category. If you remember, we can drag this line down so we can scroll down here and then actually keep our top two rows or three rows. You can drag this down however far you need. We're gonna keep our top two rows so we can see everything. What do we got? Paychecks, we can look at all those. Other income, we can look at all those. Well, why don't we just make this a drop down menu though? Let me show you another way to do that. If you click the at sign, at drop down, this is a shortcut for some of the built in smart components. It's another way to get into our data validation rules. I zoom out just a hair here. And now, what we want, if we just go over here to drop down from a range, we have a categories table with a, what do we have? Well, I guess we want to use both of these. So instead of defining it ourselves by the table references, we do need to select this range like we did previously. Press OK, click Done. And now back here on our filter, let's even actually do this. Watch this. We can combine those, merge and center those cells. And now we've got all of our options for categories just built into a drop down list. So we don't have to type anything in there. That is filtering using the filter function. Up next, we're going to look at filtering using a slicer. Welcome back. We just got done with filter using a filter statement. And now let's go back to our budget sheet and add a slicer. So I'm going to click anywhere inside of our transactions here in our budget table. I'm going to go up here to data. And then down here, we've got the add slicer button. So it gives us this little pill shaped guy here and it opens up a slicer drop down over here where we can select what we want to filter by. So I'm going to select category. And if you saw, if you notice this, it's got some weird stuff over here. It's actually pulling in data all the way through column L. So we don't want that. We just want this through column G. And so now I've got these regular columns here to filter by. I'm going to do the same thing we did in the previous video and filter by categories. And we'll leave this checked. We're not creating pivot tables today, but if we were creating pivot tables out of our data and we wanted the slicer to also control those dynamically, we leave this checked or uncheck it if we just want to filter our data without affecting those tables. Okay, our slicer can also be customized. So we have fonts that we can choose from here. Let's put on the font we've been using. Let's change up our background. Let's match it up to that plum color we were using. There it is right down there. And the text color, we'll keep that as white. Let's make it bold. And now we've got our pill shaped slicer right here. You can also drag this over here. Let's just make these a little bit taller, this first row. That way it'll stay up here in the top if I scroll down. And that's all there is to this. Now we can filter out or on any of these values. So I'm going to clear all these and just select auto business and clothing. Scroll down here, select OK. And there we go. Now our table has filtered everything except for auto business and clothing expenses. This is a nice user friendly way of being able to manipulate data very easily and intuitively using the slicer. Okay, next up, we're going to do something a little more complicated that's also very user friendly, though, by creating a search bar. Welcome back. We've done some filtering. Now let's do some searching. I'm going to create another new sheet down here. Let's name this search. And in the same way we did last time, let's just put this as a red color to color code everything. Let's turn off the grid lines and search term. It's going to go here. What we want is for this search term to return all of the values in our budget where we find that in the transaction column. All right, so let's pop in our headers right here. And now what I want to happen is anytime I type in something up here, like kids or paycheck, or even just part of a word, I want it to return all of the transactions where we find that search term. And this is how the search term works. So over here, let's say we've got a couple words like this. And if we start typing in search, the search function searches for text, this text right here, 
in a string, so this string right here, and it returns the position that it finds it. So pay starts at the first letter in that string. If I type in check, it's the fourth, starts at the fourth letter. And if I type this to J2, then it's it's not actually found in kids, but like DS is. So that's how search is gonna work. How can we use that for our full return here? We wanna wrap that, or we want to put that inside of a filter. So we wanna search down a column, a transaction column, for this search term, and then filter everything else out because of it. So let's do this. We're going to search for this term, and we're going to search in our budget sheet in the transaction column. And we're gonna get an error if we leave it like that, because what we wanna do is actually filter that by this condition. So the way filter works is you've gotta match up the range sizes. So the budget is X number of rows tall, and this search result function, this budget transaction that it's searching through has to be that same size. And you'll see here, now it's returning all of those where paycheck or where pay is found. And anytime I have kid in here, it's gonna return these, these kids transactions. I don't know what else I actually put. Okay, so there's beauty, let's type in A, so anything with the letter A in it. And it's case insensitive also. So let's just type in, see how industrial is capitalized. If I type in IND, it's gonna return it even though it's lowercase, I could type in two uppercase and a lowercase, it would give me the same thing. Pay check with some weird letters, case insensitive. So this is super handy. This has been one of my most popular things to show people how to do and create is creating this search bar. And I've gone into some more detail on a couple other ways that you can make this in Google Sheets. This is not the only way, but for our purposes here, it's it's a, the quickest and most concise way to search this one column. Okay, get ready because we're about to dive into charts and data visualization.